Russia has launched a strike on the outskirts of Ukraine's capital, further damaging the city of Kyiv. Now, this comes a day after Russia's defence ministry confirmed that its flagship of the Black Sea Fleet sunk after being badly damaged. Let's now speak to retired Major General Mick Ryan, who joins us now. There are mixed reports on how uh, this ship was, uh, was damaged, but all in all, Moskva is out of commission. Does that mean that Russia has lost their dominance in the Black Sea? Well, good morning. Uh, the Moskva is not just out of commission. It has been commissioned as a dive wreck in the Black Sea. Mm. Uh, it is a big blow for the Russians, particularly uh, for Ukrainian propaganda. But it was also a command ship and provided uh, air uh, radar coverage of the Crimea region. It would also have been an important ship if there was to be any amphibious assaults against the city of Odessa in the future. How does this then affect Russia's strategy against Ukraine? Well, firstly, it shows that Russia is unable to compete with Ukraine in the global strategic influence narrative. Mm. Uh, but it also demonstrates, once again, the Russians have gone into this conflict uh, with huge arrogance and hubris and made assumptions about the Ukrainians that haven't turned out well. In this instance, they've assumed the Ukrainians wouldn't strike Russian ships just offshore. They have. And we've seen the Russian Navy push all its ships further offshore since the Moskva was hit. A lot of people and, you know, the world over, as we watch this war from the outside, marvel at how successful Ukraine has been in terms of slowing down the Russian advance. How much is this due to the weapons that are being provided by Western allies or is it clever uh, military strategy by Ukrainians? Well, they've certainly stopped the Russians in their tracks in many instances. They haven't just slowed them down. They beat them in the Battle of Kiev. And that's due to multiple inputs. Firstly, the unifying leadership of their president, their ability to gain Western support and aid. But at the end of the day, it's soldiers on the ground with the purpose of defending their country and their mm. people who have won these fights. They have been better led. Uh, they've used better tactics. And they've outfought the Russians in almost every instance. Earlier this week, uh, Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin said that the sole mission of the operation in Ukraine was to protect the people of Donbass. Does this explain the current Russian concentration on Mariupol? Well, I think it explains President Putin reaching desperately for something he can call a victory. Mm. I mean, we saw his speech before the invasion that had a very maxim maximalist approach to the invasion of Ukraine. He somewhat wound back his objectives since then because his military just haven't been up to the job. This now shows that the Russians have adapted again to the smallest possible objectives uh, so they might win something on the battlefield that approximates a victory in the Russian mindset. OK, so at this stage, the Russians are taking on major losses. They've already lost the Moskva. Uh, there are many Russian soldiers that are already dead. Their advancement is not really going as well as they had hoped. If Putin is able to take over Mariupol, will he call it a day? Will he see that enough of a victory to be able to withdraw Russian troops? I think that's a possibility. Um, they haven't had anything that they can point to as a Russian victory yet. If they do seize Mariupol, and the Ukrainians are still fighting hard here, they may call it a Russian victory and offer some kind of ceasefire. However, given Putin's comments even this week about negotiations, mm. uh, I wouldn't hold out a lot of hope for that. He seems to still think that Russian forces can take the entirety of the Donbass in the coming weeks. Just on another matter, uh, Finland and Sweden are now considering membership of uh, NATO. Uh, and Moscow has warned that this would be a sign of aggression. What would be the wider geopolitical impact if Finland and Sweden was to join NATO? I think there's a couple of impacts here. 
Firstly, it demonstrates that even countries that are traditionally linked towards neutrality see the benefit in collective defence. Uh, and that's not just a lesson for Europe. It's also a lesson for the Indo-Pacific when we're dealing with a large, aggressive, authoritarian regime. Uh, but it also shows that the Russian strategy for Ukraine has failed. Not only has it unified NATO, it's driven other members into its arms. It is fantastic having your insights here on Weekend Breakfast. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, Major General Mick Ryan there. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Easter to you all. And to you.